And the time he dressed up as an angel, and he did not have a string on his bow. Berenice. Oh, sorry. Jacques et Loi. Perhaps you could help me. Why not? Would you like a drink? Come on, don't be silly. I'm a modern girl. Come, have a seat. You've never been here. I would remember your face. I'm curious to know what brings you here. Knight in shining armor left you alone in such a place. That's hardly why. I'm old enough to look after myself, but thanks for the thought. Today must be my lucky day. In my job, I usually deal with punks, not cute dolls like you. I'm a detective. You happen to know a certain Paul Eaton? The American? Paul Eaton? Yes, I know him. He's been filling our heads with his stories for the past month. He and the owner are mates. What about Paul? Does he come here often? You know, if he starts bugging you, it would give me more reasons to nail him. You know, Jacques, that Eaton smells like trouble. One day, he turns up from God knows where with his little British accent. After a few drink sessions with Hulot, the owner, he loses his accent. After that, he shows up here practically every day, more American than ever. Then wham! No more news. Well, that's a shame. I was really hoping to find him there. To be honest, I went to his place before coming to the Alambique and... Like magic, they disappeared. You might be able to help me. We do not really know what Eaton is doing in Paris. In the beginning, he said he was with his sister, a student. After a few binges, his sister had become his wife, and they were both onto the scam of the century. Interesting story about Eaton. Is he on to something big? No. Did he give you any details? Mind you. Guys like him, you never know what to believe. I'm fond of you, Snoop. You know how to go about things. I'm going to help you. Paul Eaton was in Paris for a contract. A scam that would make him rich. His wife was his accomplice. Then he got the jitters. He's hiding now. Hulot, the owner, definitely knows more. You'll have to see him about that. Only thing is, he's not too fond of private Snoops. Bank heist story. Eaton must surely have been planning something. He could not have just given up like a complete idiot. It must be a diversion. It smacks of a wild goose chase. Charming and smart, that P.I. Only he has it wrong. It was not the banker's money the Eatons were after, it was a treasure he had hidden in his place. The woman took care of seducing him. Paul was there to pick the fruit when it was ripe. He was completely manipulated, that poor Paul. Charming! Berenice, I can feel that, like me, you're dying to know where Paul Eaton and his wife are. What was Paul planning to do after his job? Any ideas? The owner, Hulot, knows a thing or two. Paul only spoke English, and he never mentioned any names. He could not have known much. It's not because you drink like a fish that you know more. It was his other half who pulled the strings. The owner, Lou, he's also your friend. Hmm. Would you be kind enough to introduce us? The owner's not here. He's just driven off. Actually, I think he had a rendezvous with Eaton. 
Damn it, this is too much. I'm always one step behind. This time, I'll catch them before they slip away again. It is simple, Jacques. The owner went dashing off. He mentioned a restaurant, getting back late. How would I know? A restaurant. How fitting. I was planning on inviting you. But a restaurant in Paris... It's like looking for a needle in the haystack. Any idea which one? And why would I know? Eaton talked about going out to a chic restaurant with his wife, but he did not even know which one. It was Hulot who scribbled down the address before leaving. That's all you know, is it? In any case, someone as charming as you is always beyond suspicion. Ciao, Snoop. Good luck. What number can I dial for you? A telephone lady. <laughs> That's what I call service. I'd like Marais 8211, Mr. Grégoire de Alpin, please. Right away, sir. If there's no answer, sir, call back later. Mr. Dumoulin, I respect your position and the necessity of discretion. However, Mr. de Alpin and Gracie Eaton saw each other more often than they let on. They even had a favorite restaurant they went to. Can you give me the name? It would be preferable if you asked Mr. de Alpin that in person, when he is available. Mr. Dumoulin, time's of the essence. The integrity of your brotherhood is at stake. I must find the Eatons before there's a scandal. It is a famous restaurant, Chez Alexandre, in the 8th district. Is there a menace looming? I'm sorry, sir. Even if I really wanted to, I am not allowed to divulge any information. Hulot is implicated in this affair? But how? Who knows? He's a fence, is he not? I brought you a little snack. Thank you. I'll just put it there. We'll help ourselves. Okay, where was I? Oh, uh, yes, the restaurant. Hello, what number can I dial for you? Oh, I seem to have the wrong number. Thanks, doll. You're welcome, sir. Glad to be of service. Good evening, sir. Welcome to Chez Alexandre. Do you have a reservation? Tell me, buddy. Does the name Grégoire de Alpin ring any bells? Mr. de Alpin is one of our most respectable clients. Unfortunately, he has not honored us with a visit for almost a week now. And he left no recommendation with regard to yourself. I'm sorry, sir. I cannot help you. Look, I do not care about your reservation problem. All I want is some information. Does the name Hulot mean anything to you? If you are going to take that tone with me, let me tell you right now that I do not give a damn who it is. Our register clearly indicates he is not a guest here, never has been, and probably never will be. I'm here to see some friends. Two Americans, a couple. The Eatons. I hope I haven't missed them. I do not see any reservation under that name. Maybe they have reserved the table in another establishment. 
sorry to insist, but I'm sure this couple knows your restaurant. A man and a woman, Americans. The woman has been here. Quite a look. Goes by the name of Grace Eaton. Hmm. Now that you mention it, I think she she came here. Huh. And she was with some guy or other. They even had a rather colorful exchange in English, and it was not all sweet nothings, I can tell you. But it's not the name you gave me. No, no, it was white, white, not Eton. Well, if that's all you have, the whites will have to do. Do you know where I can find them? I hope they're not too far away. This is becoming quite urgent. Are you sure these are the Americans you're looking for? You know Paris is crawling with Americans. If it's of any help to you or remember this particular couple, put their bill onto an account at the Hotel Orfe in the 8th district. An establishment undoubtedly all too respectable for them. I seem to remember that the lady has already been here with Mr. De Alpin. Sometimes appearances can be misleading, you know. Like the gentleman who joined them. Well dressed, beautiful girl, very, very high class. But he could have been a hoodlum too, for all I know. Ah, it's hard to know who you can trust. Huh? Excuse me, sir. May I help you? Good evening, sir. Welcome to the Hotel Orfe. How may I help you? Wait. I've come to see the whites. Which room might I find them in? We do not give out such information, sir. Not without the prior agreement of our clients. Come on, it's not as if I'm asking for the moon. I just want to know if the Whites are guests at your hotel. I'm sorry, sir. I will not answer any questions regarding the Orfe's guests. Ha! <laughs> I had you going there for a minute. The Whites really are guests at your hotel. Why? I never! I... I... I strongly advise you to leave this establishment before I call the authorities. Hey, and, um, while we're at it, any chance I can get their room number as well? That is enough. I refuse to talk to you any further. You're not the first guard dog I have encountered, but you're certainly the toughest. I'll let you think about it. Do not worry, though. I'll be back soon. It is better that way, sir. Okay, what do I do now? Now what? If you want any leads about the Whites, wait for me at the Nazi. I will give you some. This case is really beginning to get on my nerves. You again! I was under the impression I had shown you the door! What can I get you, sir? A bottle, please. That will be five francs, sir. All right. Thanks and good day. You're welcome, sir. Sit down. What do you want with the Whites? You look like someone who might be able to slip me some info about the Whites. We will see. How much will you pay? That's what I like. Helpful men like you. But careful. You'll not get your dough until I have checked out the info. 
I know how much info is worth even to a private dick that is flat broke. Not that it will take a lot to make me happy. You do not become rich by being a hotel doorman. The White. Do you know who I'm talking about? Well, there are a couple. What Mrs. White like? Is she hot? Yes. A tall guy and a beautiful dame, both of them Americans. They are definitely a couple. Slept in the same bed. Bathed in the same tub. Ha! <laughs> Never a dull moment, those whites. Always leading the good life. That being said, I do not envy them. Cash can go to your head sometimes. You can tell right away the whites are not very classy people. No manners. They think they can get away with murder. How long have they been at the hotel? They've only been in the hotel for three days. Since they never leave their room, it does not take much to figure out what they are up to in there. No, they have never set foot here before. Have the Whites had any visitors since their arrival? Solitary types. If you ask me, they are not tourists. They hardly ever came out of their hole. They put everything on the hotel bill. Meals, clothes, alcohol. The room has been booked for a good month. The man went out a couple of times at night. Will you give me their room number? I'm gonna pay them a little visit. Room 507. But you are out of luck. They are not there. Must have kissed and made up. The dame has dyed her hair red. Look, I've got other things to do, you know. It's not like your money is going to a life of leisure. You ought to hire a private eye. So, I would like to take a quick look. Room 507. Just a quick look. That's when I saw the most amazing thing in my life. I do not know if it was the smoke that blurred my vision, but one thing is for sure. That creature was not trying to keep them alive. And the damn creature saw me. I have fought in the war, no, but I have never seen the lights of that. His eyes stared at me. I ran. Yes, I fled like a little kid. There must have been something in the air because... I fainted right after that. I came around later, near the Alambique. That's where you saw me. Mom? Is that you? Ah, uh, no. Jacques Alouin, I'm arresting you for the double murder of the Whites. Believe me, I'm not the culprit. Speak to my mother, she'll give you the proof. Well, thank you for your help. What? Yes, I had you followed, and you led us straight to the culprit. No, something is off. I've been tricked like a sucker. But by who? Hello, what number can I dial for you? I'm sorry to disturb you, miss. Can you connect me to the Elysee 1528? 
I want to speak to Sophia Blake. Right away, sir. Sophia Blake, who's speaking? Miss Blake, this is Gus McPherson. Can we meet? I'd like to clarify a few points with you. Meet me in an hour at the restaurant Chez Alexandre. We can talk there. I do not want to be mixed up in all this. No thanks, it's not for me. Way too complicated. Ah, Mr. McPherson, I was just thinking about you. Good to see you again. Have you brought me uh, any more culprits? You've got very little on Hellaway, Inspector. Unless you have further evidence, your culprit will soon be a free man, cleared of all suspicion. I have some solid witnesses, and moreover, a very accurate witness sketch. Thank you. You heard his story. Hellaway did not kill the Whites. He didn't even know them. Like you, Hellaway is a mercenary, Mr. McPherson. Ready to do anything for a little money. Why would he have killed Malay? He knew they would have been seen together in broad daylight at the cafe. Elouin is not that stupid. Malay was the one who linked Elouin to the White's murder. An embarrassing witness. If he had not been behind bars, other witnesses would have been eliminated. Maybe even you, Mr. McPherson. I continue to doubt his guilt. You're not a judge, Mr. McPherson. But if you think you can prove his innocence... Go ahead. I am not giving up, Inspector. Quite the opposite. I will be back when I have some news. Fine, McPherson. Come back whenever you want. You know where to find me. Good evening, sir. Welcome to the Hotel Orphée. My name is Isidore Petit. What can I do for you? When the Whites returned on the night of their death, did you notice if a car dropped them off? A smart car. I don't remember the make. Who knows? I was here at the desk. Mallet was taking care of the door. Actually, he saw to all the doors. He was a doorman. And one good reason why all the locks throughout the establishment ought to be changed. Mallet is no longer with us, and nobody knows what he has done with the master key. Good. Well, if it's all right with you, I have a lot of work to do. Goodbye, sir. Sir? The man you identified is called Helouin. Jacques Helouin. Can you confirm your statement? Helouin? That's a funny name. And a private eye to boot. Now, I'm surprised. Quite a turnaround, isn't it? That is definitely why he came in here, no mistake. As for what happened to him afterwards, I have no way of knowing. You saw him use the phone. Who did he speak to? Yes, I can confirm that he did try to make a call, but I have no idea who to, especially since he didn't manage to get through. At what moment did Halloween telephone? Oh, this was well after Malais' departure. Actually, it was just before he himself left. See, he tried to make a call, then he left immediately afterwards, without a word of thanks. Did Malais join him, or was it the other way around? Yes, yes, I remember now. He and Malais had a quick chat, and it was definitely Malais who met up with him. The man arrived a few moments before Malais did. What do you remember of their conversation? I didn't hear anything. 
They spoke in low voices as if they were planning something. As for anything changing hands, I maintain that your man, Ilouin, didn't get a thing. He's the one who gave money to Malay. Malay is dead. Malay is dead? That's awful. It's starting to be an epidemic. I can kiss the money the little scoundrel owed me goodbye. Never mind. May he rest in peace. Did he owe you money? Malay has always been in debt. On the night of the murder, he slipped off without coming to see me. If he had any money on him, he hung on to it. Thank you. You're welcome. You are the detective, are you not? It's not a secret anymore, Mrs. Loiseau. I know who was in the White's room on the night of the murder. I've been told the whole story. The man that the police suspect is innocent. He is not the source of evil. According to Halloween, evil is a horned being with eyes the color of rubies. Nonsense! Evil is shapeless. Mind you, madame, everything you have told me is hardly more likely. In any case, he's incapable of inventing such a story. Faced with danger, your friend's instinct got the upper hand. He had to flee in order to save his pride. He had to invent a horrible monster. I will not react like that to this evil. I can control my imagination. Beware, Mr. McPherson. Evil will be the stuff of your worst nightmares. With the arrest of Halloween, this case has taken a different turn. And I'm the only one who can save him from the guillotine. I have to shed light on two investigations at the same time. It is time to decide who you trust, Mr. McPherson. I'm as eager as you to see the end of this nightmare. You associate with the Parisian upper crust, Mrs. Loiseau. Can you tell me about Grégoire d'Alpin? Grégoire de Alpin is an extremely rich banker in Paris. The heir of an old family. You are telling me stuff that everybody knows, Mrs. Loiseau. Give me something paranormal, something occult. Duel Lupin is a powerful man. He works in the shadows, fascinated by the Middle Ages. He is the founder of the Brotherhood of the Supreme Order of the Rosy Cross. Will that be enough, Mr. McPherson? You probably know the Brotherhood of the Supreme Order of the Rosy Cross. An occult brotherhood. Beware! Its members are highly influential in every sector of Parisian life. That is what makes them so dangerous. Contrary to what they'd have you believe, their occult knowledge is rather limited. So none of its members can aspire to true illumination, such as you attained, Mr. Loiseau. Huh, a brotherhood of puppets, manipulated by their supreme brother. Does this supreme brother have such an influence over the members as to endanger my investigations? I fear that his influence is becoming harmful. It is rumored that the Supreme Brother can comfortably manipulate everyone up to and including the Chief of Police himself. Lurking in the shadows from the beginning of my investigation, 
Grégoire d'Alpin is the Supreme Brother. I'm right, am I not? For a very long time, Grégoire de Lalepin was the Supreme Brother, Mr. McPherson. But... But he has now given way to another. The job is open. The time is ripe to propose you a successor. The heir took his place. Kay is the new supreme brother. And Kay is Dr. Frank Goffner, Mr. McPherson. Mrs. Loiseau, you must know Dr. Koffner. He's a psychoanalyst. For all I know, you're even one of his patients. Dr. Frank Koffner. Are you interested in psychoanalysis in particular, or just in the part it played in the White's case? He is also an influential member of the Brotherhood, the Brotherhood of the Supreme Order of the Rosy Cross. Did you know that? I can see you knew him well. Do you know where I might meet him? Maybe he would pay you a visit. At his cabinet, or else directly at the Brotherhood's headquarters. I imagine you know where that is. What becomes of Grégoire d'Alpin? Did they give him a leaving bonus? Did he retire to Provence? This succession is the result of a schism at the heart of the Brotherhood. The two men did not share the same vision of the past and the future. Dua Le Pen no doubt saw that his time had come. His retirement was quite voluntary. Would these men be capable of ordering the deaths of those who would stand in their way? Weren't the Whites known to both Kofner and Dua Le Pen, Mr. McPherson? Nothing is beyond the reach. There are too many questions. We'll only get answers to our questions by shedding light on the White's death. Even evil has a reason, Mr. McPherson. Even evil. Should you have need of guidance, do not hesitate. Come back and see me. see me, Mr. McPherson. I imagine it's because you've made some headway. Actually, several new occurrences have come to light. Occurrences that require an explanation from you, Miss Blake. I don't understand, Mr. McPherson. What do you mean? What I have learned totally contradicts what you said about the Whites. Who are they really? Ruby White was my younger sister and Regis White was her husband. I already told you, Mr. McPherson. There is one small detail in all this that you failed to mention. The head of Baphomet. Does that mean anything to you, Miss Blake? I don't know what you're talking about, Mr. McPherson. Should I? I do not like to be taken for a fool, Miss Blake. All right. I admit that I wasn't totally honest with you. What do you want to know? Ruby and Regis White never existed, not as you describe them anyway. Who were they really? I don't have a sister, Mr. McPherson. Ruby White's real name was Faye Johnson, and Jerome Johnson was her real husband. I hired them, a terrible mistake on my part, but I'm not responsible for their death. What were they doing in Paris? I want the truth, Miss Blake. They were supposed to retrieve the object that was stolen from me. Everything was planned in minute detail. They failed. Their death is a regrettable accident. Why so many identities? They were professional con artists, Mr. McPherson. As soon as they occupied their room at the Hotel Orphée, they became the Whites. 
a rich couple on vacation. It was also the signal that they had pulled it off. I was supposed to take delivery of the merchandise. Unfortunately, they were killed in the meantime. Who, in your opinion, killed the Whites? The Whites were criminals, Mr. McPherson. They made a foolish mistake. They're dead. Aside from their own carelessness, it can only be because of the man who was behind all of this, Grégoire de Alpin. Then you recognize the existence of this man, Grégoire d'Alpin. Who is he really? A madman, blinded by an obsession to possess a supposedly valuable relic, the head of Baphomet. By stealing it, he destroyed my life. D'Alpin led my husband to his death, my family to ruin. In the course of my investigations, I was told about a much coveted object, the head of Baphomet. Does that mean anything to you? The object has been in my husband's family for generations, Mr. McPherson. I didn't lie to you. Grégoire de Alpin stole it from us. My husband, already weak from his illness, died of sorrow. I now want to retrieve what is rightfully mine and avenge the memory of the man I loved. What exactly is the importance of this object? this head of Baphomet. And why is the Alpin so anxious to get hold of it? I don't really know. My husband was very secretive about the value of the head of Baphomet. As for me, I simply want to retrieve what is rightfully mine. But de Alpin and his lot venerate the relic, surrounded with many legends. Legends of immortality. As you grow old, these legends suddenly become a source of hope, a source of life and death. Do you think the killer will strike again? He would do anything to achieve his aim, Mr. McPherson. Everyone who has crossed his path is in danger. The man is insane. He'll kill again. You must understand that you are the only one who can stop him. We have to put an end to this madness. The object must be found before other heads roll. Go and tell the police what you have told me. Inspector Lebrun will be glad to help you. He'll understand, I'm sure. You still haven't understood. The police do not want a part of this. De Alpin has the Paris police in his pocket, Mr. McPherson. Paris is just a puppet on his string. That is a tragic story, Miss Blake. Why didn't you tell me the truth from the outset? I was alone in Paris, confronted by a fearless enemy. I had to act quickly and discreetly. If you had refused to help me, Mr. McPherson, I would have had no one else. I didn't want to be dishonest with you. Supposing I refuse to continue the investigation? It's too late, Mr. McPherson. We can't back out now. The Whites are dead. This doorman is dead. Your patron is dead. Would you be able to live with new victims on your conscience? Innocent people you've met, questioned? Find me the head of Baphomet and the problem will be resolved. Well, if you put it like that, I agree to carry on, Miss Blake. You see, we can reach an agreement, Mr. McPherson. If I can be of any assistance, sir? Yes, I... Visitors are not admitted, sir. Would you kindly leave? You are mistaken. I'm not just any old visitor. I've come to make inquiries. Inquiries about the occult. Visitors are not admitted, sir. Would you kindly leave? The knowledge stored here would be impossible to find anywhere else. Even the Sorbonne is but a pale shadow of your great learning. Our library contains knowledge and secrets that cannot even be found at the Sorbonne. The Brotherhood of the Supreme Order of the Rosy Cross are the most erudite people in the Western world. Does your sealed-off library include books on magic, Kabbalah, divination, tarot, 
lost civilizations, Mu, Hyperborea, Atlantis, the Holy Grail, and alchemy? Sir, one must not joke with the occult arts. Alchemy, the great work. How does one attain this great work? Must one first become a supreme brother before contemplating all of its power? Like your SBGDA? Your alchemist? The great Ouroboros has spoken, sir. GDA is no more. The SBK is our supreme leader now. You mean to say Dialpin is no longer your supreme brother? Had his term of office ended, or was he deposed? We are not in the Middle Ages now, sir. It is simply an inheritance by due succession. What does the future hold for a former SB once he has stood down? What became of GDA? GDA is the supreme light. His wisdom becomes accessible to all consciences. The great work has been done. Could you be more explicit, Mr. Dumoulin? If what you say regarding your GDA means that he is no longer among us, that he is dead, then, my friend, you will have the courts to answer to. Glory to the SBK! You seem to know a little too much, Dumoulin. Be careful with your threats. I'm not here to bother you. I already have a suspect for these crimes. But from what you have told me, I could easily have you charged with being an accessory. At the very worst, you might be sent to the nuthouse. What would the police do, eh? What would it gain? They will have to wait a long time for an order from the police chief. Leave before things get worse for you. strange front door, an improved version of all the other locks I've come across so far. disappear for ages then turn up without warning. You must be after something. Berenice, you're my little green fairy. With everything we've been through together, I know you'll always be here for me. You're the only person in Paris I can trust. So... Still the same sense of humor. I see the Parisian air inspires you. No, seriously. You're really the only person I can trust. I have one or two questions that I need you to answer. Mac, you know full well I would not refuse you anything. Ask, I'll find you the answer. Berenice, do you remember the other night before you came round to my place? I had some complications. That guy who got away from me. Well, I caught up with him, but need to know if you've seen him here before. Helloin. Jacques Helloin. Yes. Well, I think it was the same. He came asking questions a few days ago. I don't know. Baby, those beautiful eyes of yours surely saw a beautiful stranger. Especially an American. Do you remember a guy at the Alembic going by the name of Paul Eaton? It's funny you mention it. Another detective came and asked me the same thing a few days ago. Good-looking bloke, that P.I. Nice mustache. Yes, yes, I remember Eaton. He was hanging out with the Alambic crowd last month. Bernice, it is vital you tell me everything you know about Paul Eaton. And I warn you, everything he has told you is probably lies. I think his name is also a fake. He was not very chatty, Polly boy. I 
must say, he did not speak French very well. All I got was that he was in Paris with a sister, who I never saw. He hinted once or twice that they were onto something big. Loads of cash, easy work. You know, Mac, now that I think of it, Paul Eaton was definitely the dodgy type. Have you seen anything of Paul Eaton since? No point getting all jealous, Mac. You're the only American in my heart. I've not seen Eaton here again. And as for Albert, the owner, I have no idea. I suspect Paul pulled off the scam of the century and fled to Borneo. Berenice, I think I'd better warn you. This Paul Eaton is mixed up in some dirty business. I just hope the boss, Albert, did not trust Eaton too much. Paul and old man Hulu? Of course they know each other. They even got really chummy. Hulu, the boss? Is he there? Maybe he noticed some things that you missed, baby. You know, you might have been too busy staring at that tall, dark American to notice anything peculiar about him. Albert is not here. I was supposed to meet him here this morning, but he's not come by today. You know, Mac, Albert Hulu has not changed. He's as weird as ever. If I see him, I will tell him you're looking for him. Berenice, I'm just asking you to be careful. This business is complicated and more dangerous than it seems. Anyway, I'm off. See you soon. Ciao, Mac. Take care. start thinking you can't do without me. Did I forget something at your place? Bebe, I need a small favor. I have to infiltrate the Brotherhood, and I need a fake letter of introduction. Can you write me one using this letter? No problem. Come by later, your letter will be ready. Secrets are all mine.
again. Wasn't getting my son arrested enough for you? I believe your son is innocent, but I need evidence so I can prove it. Do you think so? My son left me the key to his office safe. Here, take it. You'll find what you're looking for in there. notes. They contain all the information he found during his investigation. What number can I dial for you? I'm sorry to disturb you, miss. Can you connect me to the post office, please? I'd like to send a telegram. Right away, sir. Post a telegraph, go ahead, please. This is urgent. A telegram for J. Wells, Pinkerton Agency, New York. Take this down. Seek information on a couple, Faye and Jerome Johnson. Stop. Americans, stop. I've made a note of it. Finished up? Goodbye. <laughs> I must get past these alleys. If anyone lays their hands on me, I certainly don't want to find myself in a cell.
Truth. <laughs> 